Hello greetings and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. In today's video, we're going to be looking at transverse waves. It's basically an introduction. We're going to go over the properties, the different parts of the transverse wave, and we're going to focus on amplitude. Let's go. If you've missed the other videos in this playlist, click the link in the description box below. Screen over there at the top, you can see the definition of a transverse wave. You may be expected to state that definition, so it's a good thing to learn it, but I first of all want you to understand what it means. So it says a transverse wave is a wave in which the particles of the medium vibrate at right angles to the direction of the motion of the wave. Now, there's a few things that I want to point out in this definition. So, first of all, a transverse wave is a wave, we know that, in which the particles of the medium... Now, remember, the transverse waves and longitudinal waves are mechanical waves, which means they require a medium like air or water to travel through. So, the particles of that medium, what this definition is telling us, is that they vibrate, so they move at right angles. Remember, right angles is 90 degrees to the direction of motion of the wave. And over here, this is not part of the definition. It says a transverse wave is a succession of transverse pulses, which just means if I have transverse pulse after transverse pulse after transverse pulse, all together, those little trains of transverse pulses gives me a transverse wave. Okay, but let's focus on the definition. So the particles of the medium vibrate at right angles to the direction of motion of the wave. What that means is if the particles represented either by a little x on this diagram, you can see it over here, or represented by a dot on this diagram, these all represent particles on the wave, they will vibrate at 90 degrees or right angles and to the direction of the motion. So say, for example, the particles go up or down, which is what this diagram indicates, up or down motion of the particles, that means that the wave, this wave over here, is either going to be moving left or right. If the particles go up or down and the wave goes left or right, look at the angle that those two make, a 90 degree angle. So here's another diagram to illustrate the exact same concept. Do you see it says propagation? That just means which way the wave is moving. So in this case, the wave is moving to the right. And look at these arrows. That indicates the direction that the particles are vibrating in. So the particles are moving up or down, the wave is moving left or right. Now it is very important that you understand the different parts of the transverse wave, the different properties, the different variables associated with a transverse wave, you will be expected to calculate some of these things, such as wavelength, maybe amplitude, things like period, things like frequency. Now, what are some points on the wave that you need to be able to identify? We'll go through these different properties and different points in more detail in separate videos, but just a quick overview. You need to be able to identify a crest, which is the highest point of a wave, highest point or peak of a wave. You need to be able to identify a trough, which is the lowest point on a wave. So here we got crest, here we got trough. That's how you spell it. Trough is how you say it. You need to be able to identify points in phase. And I will explain what this means in my video about transverse waves and wavelength. Okay, so points on phase, for example, would be a crest and a crest or a trough and a trough but I'll go into that in more detail in an upcoming video. You need to be able to identify the amplitude, which is this distance over here, or this distance over here, that'll be the same distance. You need to be able to identify a wavelength of a wave. You also need to be able to look at a diagram, a very specific diagram, and that could maybe help you identify the period of the wave. You need to be able to work out frequency. So basically what you see in front of you is a transverse wave. This is the equilibrium position, this gray line over here. So we will be going through all of this, some of it in this video, some of it in videos to come. Just remember to check out the link for this playlist in the description box below where the videos for the above subtopics will be linked. Let's look at the amplitude of a wave in this video. The definition for amplitude is amplitude is the maximum, okay, the biggest, disturbance, remember disturbance is about how the particles move, of a particle from its rest or equilibrium position. So remember in the previous diagram, I showed you that this line over here is called the equilibrium position. It's also called the rest position. So let's look at both of these diagrams. That's the equilibrium position. So the amplitude would be the maximum disturbance. In other words, the biggest distance that a particle can move from that equilibrium position. So we will measure the amplitude from here up to the crest, 
of a wave, so that can give me the amplitude, or from the equilibrium position to the trough of a wave. If this, say this is my axis over here, let's pretend this is like an x-axis. If I had to label that with a 0 and this with a 2, let's pretend, and this with a negative 2, what this would tell me is that the amplitude, let's say that this is measured in centimeters, that would tell me that the amplitude is 2 centimeters. And over here, it's also 2 centimeters. And I know you might say, but ma'am, it says negative 2 over there. The negative 2 just indicates that this is a trough that we're dealing with. It's going down. Okay. But when you state amplitude for me, you state it as a positive 2 centimeters. Same thing over here. This, for example, is showing the exact same thing, but here my amplitude, my distance, my maximum disturbance from my rest position is five centimeters. So that's as simple as it gets when it comes to amplitude. There's one way that they can throw you off, and that will be by giving you something like this. So look at what they're giving you over here in this diagram. They are indicating that the distance between the vertical distance between this crest down and in line with this trough. So that, so that distance, distance is, is six centimeters. centimeters. And remember the definition of amplitude. Let me let me go back quickly. It's a maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest or equilibrium position. So it will be from here, the equilibrium or rest position, up towards the crest or down towards the trough. So if this whole thing is six centimeters, how far is that? That would be three centimeters. So just be careful with what information they are giving you. You have to look at the diagram carefully, read the question carefully. And what would the amplitude be of this wave over here? So it would be from the equilibrium, equilibrium position over here up to the crest. That would be two units. I'm saying two units because they don't actually label this axis over here, which is bad. You should always label the axes of in the next video, we will look at points in phase and points out of phase, and we will look at wavelength. I'll see you then.